Welcome back to another video guys. If you are a print on demand seller, then you've got to watch this video. I've got 14 really important tips for anyone who is a print on demand seller. Hi everyone. Welcome back. I hope you're all having a great day today. And if you're new here, my name is Greg. I like to talk about online entrepreneurship and sharing the resources that I wish I had along my journey. So if you're interested in making money online, feel free to look around the channel and consider subscribing. In today's video, there is going to be no nonsense. I'm getting straight into 14 really important tips that any print on demand seller needs to know. Whether you are new to print on demand or you haven't even started, but you're thinking about it, or if you have been doing print on demand for a while, this will still be a helpful video. This is a culmination of 14 things that I've learned over the years of being in print on demand. So I think this will be a very valuable video. With that said, if you guys do enjoy these videos, I always appreciate the thumbs up. I've got to put that in here just as a reminder. So if you guys do hit the thumbs up button, thank you so much in advance. And as promised, no time wasted. Let's get straight into this list of 14. Number one, and this is a crucial one, and that is that you need to be creating your designs on an external third-party designer. You don't want to be creating your designs that you're uploading on the actual website you're uploading it to. Now hear me out on this. Sometimes the print-on-demand sites, they have good tools for creating designs and it makes it convenient, but the big problem is you can't then save that design and upload it to different websites. The big thing with print on demand and one of the reasons it's so profitable is because you can create one design and upload it to multiple print on demand websites. However, if you're not creating that design yourself on your own tools, then you don't have that design file to then upload to the different sites. So with that said, on this channel, I've shared with you guys a bunch of different design tools that you can use. Some of them very quickly, if you're using a smartphone only, you don't have a computer. If you have an iPhone, you can use Typorama. If you have an Android, you can use WordSwag. There are also other ones popping up on smartphones, but that's where you can start if you only have a smartphone. If you do have a computer, you have both free and paid design tools. The best free one right now is probably canva.com. You will just have to remove the background yourself. I've got more videos on this on the channel showing how to use this for free and remove the background, but canva.com is going to be your best free computer design tool. And then placeit.net is going to be your best paid premium design tool on the computer. A cool thing with those two computer ones is you can also use them on your smartphone by just using the internet. You don't have to use a special app. So they're computer and smartphone based. So that's number one, make sure that you're creating the design files yourself so that you can upload that file to all different websites. Number two, this is to know the file formats that are required on each of the print on demand websites. A quick breakdown on this, so you know everything you need to know in 30 seconds is Merch by Amazon is the only one right now that has a specific requirement for the files that you're uploading. What this requirement is, is for most of their products, it's 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. Now, as a little efficiency trick that I use is whenever I create new designs, whether that's on Placeit or Canva or Typerama, whatever it is, I then go to bulkresizephotos.com and I format them for Merch by Amazon. By doing this, that means that you then have that one file pre-formatted for Merch by Amazon and all the other print on demand websites, they don't have requirements. So that means that wherever you're uploading this design, it's going to work. So I've got another video on the channel that goes through how to use bulk resize photos, but essentially all you have to do is upload the whole folder of designs, whether this came off of Typerama or place it wherever it is, you can do multiple at a time. All you have to do is switch the 50% scale to 100% scale, go to exact dimensions on the left side, input that 4,500 pixels by 5,400, and then select expert mode, which is completely free to use. You don't have to pay for this and then switch it to PNG and make sure that transparent background is turned on. Then you just export them and download it and you are good to go. Those are your new designs that are formatted to go on any print on demand website that we will be using. Number three, this has to do with a Teespring storefront. So a lot of the times people are asking me, how do I edit the storefront? What if I forgot to add a design to it when I was launching it? Well, the edit button for storefronts is very hidden. However, I'll show you how to do it here so you know going forward. All you have to do is click your email in the top right corner of Teespring, and then from that drop down menu, you hit storefronts. And then this is where it's hidden. There's a little edit icon in the corner of the thumbnail of the storefront. You just click that. And then if you do, for instance, have to add a product to that storefront or remove some, all you have to do is click products and then add products and then just use the check mark tool or the uncheck tool to decide what is going to be in that storefront. Just something small that you should know and those things are commonly misunderstood. So hopefully that helps with your Teespring storefront. Number four, this is changing the pricing on your items on Teespring. As of right now on Teespring, there is no way to change the price of your products. In order to do this currently, you have to send an email to sellers at teespring.com or campaigns at teespring.com and they can change the price for you. However, they are definitely working on this feature. About six months ago, they gave me beta access to test this feature of changing the pricing and editing live listings. So that is definitely coming soon. Nobody knows exactly when, but when that feature does inevitably come, we will be able to easily change the pricing and descriptions and everything we need to on live listings. The only thing here is when I was testing this feature, you weren't able to change the design. 
So if you uploaded the design slightly off center, you're not going to be able to change that design. You're still going to have to create a new listing to fix the design on the shirt. Everything else in the live listing, you'll be able to change and edit, but the actual design is as you uploaded it. Now, ideally, I would love to be able to edit the designs on live listings, as I'm sure you guys would, but I can see the issue with this for Teespring. If we're able to edit the actual designs on live listings, someone could swap out the design or add something inappropriate and the system's not going to catch it because the listing's already live. So we'll see what they do on this. I know they're working on it, but as of right now, you can't change the pricing and edit a whole lot on the live listings, but that feature's coming soon. If you do need to change anything, just be sure to email campaigns at teespring.com or sellers at teespring.com for now. Number five, this is the dots per inch or pixels per inch on the uploads. Now on all different print on demand websites, they have requirements or recommendations for how many dots per inch they want in the designs. And typically this is around 300 dots per inch. Now with that said, I've been uploading designs that are 72 dots per inch, which is typically what comes straight off of Typorama. And I've been doing that for years and I've actually ordered the designs to see what the print quality looks like in person. And I can 100% report back to you guys that there have been no issues with 72 dots per inch and they print perfectly. I don't know if these designs are recreated by the computer before they are printed but these designs are coming out perfect at 72 dots per inch. So I wouldn't worry about making the designs 300 dots per inch if you don't have tools to do it easily. Number six, this is the Teespring Trust Score. Now I've talked about this a whole lot on this channel, but a quick thing that I wanna note here is that Teespring is the only site that has a trust score. Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, they don't have trust scores. Merch by Amazon has a tier system, so the more sales you get, the more you can upload, but they do marketing for you right off the bat. Redbubble does marketing for you right off the bat as well. Teespring is the only one that has a trust score, so they don't do marketing for you right off the bat. Essentially, all this means is if you are a new seller on Teespring, you created a new account, when you upload designs, Teespring's not going to be doing a whole lot of marketing for you until you get a couple sales on your account yourself and then they see that, okay, this seller is uploading designs that sell, so we should start promoting them for them. That's essentially all the trust score is. And the point that I wanna make here is that Teespring is the only one with this trust score. Number seven, and this is understanding the big three as I like to call them. The big three are the three sites that I think you should be uploading your designs to because they get the most sales. There are a ton of different print on demand websites out there. There's more than you can count. But the thing is you don't wanna waste your time uploading your designs to all of these because they're not all equal. If you've heard of the Pareto principle before, which essentially means 80% of your sales are going to come from 20% of your work or 20% of the print on demand sites in this case. So what I found is those 20% of sites that are making 80% of the sales for me personally are the big three. So that's Teespring, Merch by Amazon, and Redbubble. So for anyone starting out, and for you guys who have been doing this for a while, I recommend you upload your designs to those three sites. Now down the road, once you've gotten hundreds of designs uploaded to all three of these sites, then you can start uploading those hundreds of designs to other sites as well. Just know that they are smaller, they're not going to have as much traffic, and they're not going to be making you as many sales. Now to build off of this, I often get the question of why don't I use Shopify to sell print on demand items? And the short answer for that is I don't think it's necessary and it comes with a monthly subscription. The big three sites that I've been talking about don't have any fees associated with it, so it's completely free to use. Now down the road, if you are building a brand and things are starting to grow, then you absolutely can add in a Shopify store and then you can collect emails and you can do a couple other things, just know that it's going to come with a monthly subscription. So you have to make sure that it makes sense numbers wise. I just want you guys to know at the end of the day with the big three sites, they're completely free to use. And I will personally say you can make as much money as you want to make just with these three sites. You don't have to pay for any subscription, Shopify accounts or anything. Number eight, and this is about copyright, but not the copyright you're thinking of. This is about copyright of the designs that you're creating. Oftentimes people get confused and they think that if you upload the design to Teespring, then if you go upload it to Merch by Amazon, it's going to be a copyright problem there because it looks like it's a duplicate. You uploaded it somewhere else. However, just know that all these sites are non-exclusive and you created the design. So technically you own the copyright. So you can upload that to as many different sites as you want to, assuming they're all non-exclusive. The big three are absolutely non-exclusive. So Teespring, Merch by Amazon and Redbubble non-exclusive, you can upload the same design to all three of them exactly identical. So just know that as far as copyright goes, if you created it, you can sell it on as many different non-exclusive sites as you'd like. Number nine, and this has to do with copyright as well. This is in regards to phrases and quotes and other people's designs. My big stance on this is if you are going to use other people's designs as inspiration or find quotes for inspiration, customize them to make them your own. This is going to save you a lot of hassle down the road. Although a lot of the times you could get away with using the same quote, but recreating the design, I just recommend you customize it yourself. And the reason for this is 
Teespring, Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, they all have automated systems. And what these automated systems are is they're looking for duplicate designs. They're looking for potential copyright infringement from titles and descriptions and designs. And if you upload something that is just too similar to someone else's and the system thinks that it's copyright infringement, they'll flag it and take down that listing. And then you have to go through the whole problem of emailing IP escalations at teespring.com and asking what happened, was that a real takedown or was that a mistake? And then they investigate it. Most of the time, as long as you know you're not infringing on anyone's copyrights, the system flagged it for the wrong reason and it was just being overly safe and it removed your listing. And now that's taking up all of your time that you have to send emailing them to get this rectified and get your design back up and listed. So my short advice is just make sure that you're not using anyone else's designs and always customize whatever you're uploading to your own personal design. Number 10, this is buying your own shirts. So on Teespring and Merch by Amazon, you both have kind of a sales number in the beginning. So on Teespring, it's for the trust score. Once you get a few sales on your account, then they start doing all the marketing for you. On Merch by Amazon, it's for the tier system. So in the first tier, when you make your account, you have 10 slots available. Once you get 10 sales, you move into tier two, which has 25 slots available. And then once you get 25 sales, it keeps going up and up. Now, these are the only two sites that have kind of sales quotas that you have to make in the beginning. And the difference is this, on Teespring, you cannot buy your own shirts to count towards your trust score. However, on Merch by Amazon, you absolutely can buy your own shirts to work towards the tier system. So that is a very important, clear distinction that I hope clears up a lot of things for you guys. Number 11, I don't even have enough fingers for this, so I'm just gonna stop doing that. Number 11 is that you need to be using social media in the beginning for your Teespring trust score. This is by far the easiest way to get your trust score built and get those first few initial sales. Now, once you've done this in the beginning on Teespring and you've gotten those first few sales and you've gotten your trust score made, Teespring will do the rest. You do not need to keep doing your own marketing. This is only in the beginning to get your trust score established. Now, a couple really important tips for this topic is that Instagram has by far outperformed all the other social media networks for this strategy in the beginning. And I've got plenty of videos on this channel explaining how to do this from start to finish. However, Instagram definitely takes the cake. Using model photos that you create on Placeit is going to be gold for getting people from social media over to Teespring to make purchases. You can do this in Placeit, it's included in any of their plans. And you can upload these photos to Instagram, then you can also upload them to other social media networks and just get your model photos out there. Speaking of that, the last really big tip on this topic is that I always use later.com and I highly recommend it. It's completely free to use and you can link up not only Instagram, but also Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. So all you really have to do here is go to these four different sites and create an account for your Teespring storefront where you're going to be sending traffic to to get those sales for your trust score. And then you go to later.com and you sign up, create a free account, and you can schedule out posts to all four of these platforms at once. You can actually schedule out like a whole month at once. And again, it's completely free to use. But what's cool about that is the post that you would normally just be putting on Instagram. With later.com, you can easily post that also to Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest just to get more traffic completely for free. Number 12, this is the order minimum that used to exist on Teespring. There's still a lot of information out there that's confusing a lot of people, but just know that there used to be an order minimum on Teespring. And what that was, was you had to get like three sales before that design was going to be printed on the t-shirts and shipped out to those people. If it didn't get three sales within the duration of the campaign, it wouldn't print and no one would be charged. However, since then, Teespring has changed this and now every single order that someone places is going to be printed and shipped out to them. And on top of that, the designs that you upload into listings are going to automatically relaunch. So they're never going to be over. In previous years on Teespring, it would only last three days and then that design would be taken down and that would be it. Now on Teespring, they are evergreen. They auto relaunch and they go forever. So that is really good for us as sellers. Number 13, quickly, I just wanna remind you guys of the overall strategy for print on demand. This is where the money is really made. It's knowing that you have to create a high volume of designs that are good designs. A lot of people get attracted to the strategy of low volume of really good designs and then put paid ads behind them. But I'm telling you what actually works for passive income in print on demand is creating a ton of good designs, putting no paid ads behind them and letting these big three sites do all the marketing for you. And the last one, number 14, this is royalty free designs and photos. Can you use them? The answer is yes, but here's the catch. If you're not going to be modifying that design or that image and you're just uploading it as is, if someone else uploaded that same royalty free or copyright free image, then yours will be taken down because it's a duplicate. However, if you are customizing that to make it your own and then uploading it, 
then there's no problem. Personally, I really don't even use these royalty-free images or anything for designs. I always just create everything from Placeit or Canva Typerama and just making it from scratch using one of their templates. But I have seen a lot of people trying to do this, just downloading a copyright-free image and uploading it onto a shirt. I really don't think it works well. But with that said, that should clarify what happens if someone uploaded that same thing before you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something from it. As usual, I'm going to link up a couple useful videos for you. The one on the top is a full print-on-demand tutorial, everything you need to know for the big three and the one on the bottom will be another useful one on how to create those mock-ups that I was talking about for social media. If you guys have any questions let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this I really appreciate the thumbs up and I will be seeing you guys in the next video.